This video is to show you a little tool that I like to use for comparing sounds. So suppose we have a bunch of sounds that I've strung together here that differ in their frequency properties. So I can hear them going up, but I really want to do some detailed analysis of how these sounds are different. So what I have is a little script that will accept as its arguments a bunch of different sound selections. It'll just say, select all the sounds to be used. I'll hit continue, and it'll draw the spectra of each of those sounds. And what it'll do is the first sound selected will be the most blue, the last sound selected will be the most red, and all the ones intermediate will gradually transition from blue to red. So in this case, we can hear that that transition between sh and s involved this frequency peak going down, this frequency peak going up, and now I know exactly what happened. Another thing I might want to do is compare different vowels. So for example, if I have a continuum between hid and heed, sounding like this, I'm interested in what the spectra look like across these sounds. So I'm going to take my script, I'm going to run it, and I'm going to select those sounds and press continue. So the problem here is that most of the spectrum is actually below the floor of the graph. So I'm going to go back in the script and change that. The draw db low is the lower point on the y-axis. I'm going to have this go to minus 15. I'm going to run it again, hit continue. Now I see more of the script. And so what's visible now is that the first formant changes only a little bit going down. The second formant changes by going up, and then this third formant here raises in intensity, and that's the spectral difference between those sounds. The rest of it is all pretty uniform. So now I can verify that using this spectrum. And the reason that's important is that when I created this continuum, I wanted to make sure that everything above this frequency around 3700 hertz was exactly the same across the whole continuum to make sure that that wasn't something that a listener could use to tell the sounds apart. And what I've done using this script is verify that, in fact, um, from one end of the continuum to the, to the other, there are no changes um, in those frequency ranges. Another example of doing this will be um, between these sounds here. So I've created uh, these narrowband sounds which have uh, different um, envelope shapes in the spectral domain. So, for example, if I put those together, we can see that these are gradually getting wider in the frequency domain. And what I've controlled is the dB per millimeter roll-off in terms of cochlear spacing. If you don't understand that, it doesn't matter. What matters is I'm hoping that this sound has a narrower bandwidth than the last sound. So let's see if it's true. I'm going to run the script. I'm going to select those sounds. Press continue. And again, it looks like I have to zoom into the spectrum a little bit. It goes well below zero, and it really pops out you know, not much higher than 20. So I'm going to go back into the script, and the draw db high, instead of 50, I'm going to make it 25, and I'm going to make the lower end go down to minus 25. I can also see that between 0 and 10,000 hertz, um, I'm really only interested in some of the lower frequencies. So I'm going to take that draw db hertz high and cut that down to about 3,000, run the script again. Now the sounds remain selected, so I'm going to press continue. And now I can verify what I was hoping to be true to begin with. So the first sound has the narrowest bandwidth, it's the most peaky, and as I'm transitioning from blue to red, I'm seeing a wider bandwidth. So this tool just lets me visualize that really quickly, so as I create sounds, I can do a quick comparison between them.